In the midst of social distancing and business lockdowns, a freelance writer and a graphic artist bought a bus, converted it into a tiny home on wheels, and moved out of our four-bedroom house. One year later, we downsized to a Chevy Express. Now we travel between Texas and Pennsylvania from April through November while exploring small towns with rich histories. In the winter, we hunker down in Texas in our schoolie and dream of our next big trip. We're Alan and Teresa. And we're rolling with our nomies. Okay, so we're, we're here in Gettysburg. We're going to try this tour again. Um, we're currently looking at the historic train station of the former Hanover Junction, Hanover and Gettysburg Railroad. Um, yeah, this is the train station where President Abraham Lincoln arrived on November the 18th, 1863 for the dedication of the Soldiers National Cemetery. When Lincoln arrived, empty coffins still waited in railroad cars behind the station for those soldiers yet to be interned at Soldiers National Cemetery. Yeah. Woo! This is about the scratching it with a cough. Cough. You think? I mean, and up ahead of it, you see the Majestic Theater. Now, the Majestic Theater is actually housed behind several of these windows. And it is a historic theater. Um, a lot of Eisenhower's press conferences and press briefings were held here during his presidency. Now, the Gettys, the Times Square building across the street here, um, Get, Gettysburg lawyer David McHoney owned and operated a large social and business hall through the latter part of the 19th century. Um, he founded and created the first battlefield preservation group in Gettysburg. And we're coming up on the side of one Lincoln Square. It's currently part of the Gettysburg College, but at one time it was the Gettysburg Hotel and before that the McClellan House, a small hotel built in the 1700s. Most of the buildings here on the square have been here since at the very least, mid 1700s. The Hoke Condori House, built by Michael Hoke in 1790, this is the oldest house within the original borough limits of Gettysburg. Today it is the Brafferton Inn Bed and Breakfast. But it is the oldest building. It was built in 1786. We're currently looking at the Will's Tyson building and I don't know that you're going to be able to pick it up but right below 
window number one, two, three, you're going. You should be able to see the the um, artillery projectile, as they call it. It's actually left over from, of course, the Civil War, when there was a photography studio housed on the second floor. You see it up there? Uh, David Wills was a uh, prominent lawyer here in Gettysburg in 1851 <clears throat> and this was his home he lived here and in eight, he, this house was built in 1816 it was purchased by Wills in 1859 after the battle and during the battle the Wills home sheltered wounded men Provost Marshal Marcina Patrick commanded the military's after battle recovery efforts from Will's home. Also, David Williams organized the creation of the Soldiers National Cemetery at this house. David Wills did. Yeah. yeah. Abraham Lincoln spent the night here on November 18, 1863, where he completed his draft of the Gettysburg Address. Following November 19th dedication, a reception held in his honor, Governor Curtin, Secretary of State William Seward, and several governors and foreign ministers were all in attendance. See, here's 9 and 10 is the other side. It's now the Masonic building. This right here is where... The Harper House was. Right. It's the Harper House. This all of here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this this is the home of Roy Robert G. Harper. At the time of the battle, the home was used as a hospital to care for the wounded. And on the evening of November 18th, it was the sleeping quarters for Secretary of State Seward and Washington, D.C. Commissioner of Public Buildings, Benjamin French, and Andrew Cross of the Christian Commission. Okay. Presbyterian Church was used as a hospital site for wounded soldiers beginning early in the battle and continuing for many weeks, causing parishioners to forego normal services. President Lincoln attended a political rally here sponsored sponsored by the Ohio delegation after the National Cemetery dedication. He was joined by local hero John Burns, Seward, and others. A period pew rests inside the sanctuary in the approximate location where Lincoln sat. President Eisenhower was a member of this church, and it is the Presbyterian Church of Gettysburg. It's a gorgeous building. Ahead of us, you can see a small frame house. It was the home of Jenny Wade, who happens to be the only civilian who was killed during the Battle of Gettysburg. But this this small frame house would have been typical for a working a working class family. Just two stories. And we'll be able to get a good view of the side of it here. You can see it had a small little lean-to kitchen added on the back. This house marks the site of John Rupp House Tannery. Although the existing house was built for the Rupp family in 1868, a smaller two-story brick house stood here during the Battle of Gettysburg. Uh, during which its rear portion was occupied by Confederate soldiers. It also, we just walked past it, um, 
the first municipal water supply was housed right here where this blue fence is. And they started it in 1822. Um, it had a well in a spring and channeled the water to their to the reservoir at the top of the hill at the intersection of High Street and Stratton Street. Distribution from the reservoir throughout town was accomplished by way of buried wooden pipes fashioned from bore out logs grooved to fit at the ends. In 1860 a small frame structure was constructed over the well which was replaced in the early 1870s with a new and larger tasteful building. Awesome. During the week prior to the Battle of Gettysburg, this area endured several days of rain, leaving many basements partially filled with water. The Gerlach family at 319 Baltimore Street constructed platforms of Mr. Gerlach's supply of fine wood. The family and 11 other people spent portions of July the 2nd and 3rd on their platform in the cellar. We're coming up on um, Shriver Saloon in Tenpin Alley. During, dating from the 1860s, the, the Shriver House was a wartime residence of George and Hattie Shriver and their two daughters. The family vacated the house during the battle and Confederate soldiers set up the sharpshooters position in the garret for two days. There's a window over there. Right, right. There's a little window. Hey, hey, mind your business there, son. It is a private residence, I believe. Oh, here comes some reenactors down the hill. The cornerstone of the Prince of Peace Episcopal Church was laid on July 2nd, 1888 for the 25th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg. The church is a battlefield memorial for inside the large tower, survivors placed plaques in memory of their fallen comrades. It's just an absolutely gorgeous church. The Academy, the Academy building was the inaugural home of America's oldest continually operating seminary, began in 18, 1826, and Gettysburg College in 1832, as well as a meeting place for the Anti-Slavery Society. During the time of the battle, it was a young woman's finishing school. An artillery shell is embedded in by an upstairs window, and shortly after the battle, Frederick Douglass spoke just two blocks west of this site at Agricultural Hall. We're looking at the home of John Jack Hopkins. 
who resided here from 1851 until his passing in 1868. The janitor at the Pennsylvania College, now Gettysburg College, from 1847 until his passing, Jack was popular on campus as shown by the attendance of the entire college staff and student body at his funeral. He is reported to have assisted with runaway slaves. His son, John Edward, joined the U.S. Colored, 25th U.S. Colored Troops shortly after the Battle of Gettysburg and served until the end of the war. You can see ahead of us the Adams County Courthouse. This, this was not the original courthouse for Adams County, but it is the longest standing one, I believe. And it was at the, um, at the time of the battle here in Gettysburg, it was located here. And on June 26th, 1863, men of the 26th Pennsylvania Emergency Militia, which included local college and seminary students, were paroled by General Jubal Early after being captured during the Confederates' initial advance. He admonished them to go home to their mothers. And this, this particular courthouse was built in 1859. And our statue of Thaddeus Stevens. What's, what do they call him? The common... The commoner. The commoner. Definitely a, a proponent of public education. And also wrote the 14th Amendment. Okay. Yeah, he wrote the 14th Amendment which requires equal treatment under the law and extends civil liberties to the state level. General Oliver Otis Howard of the Union 11th Corps used this building, as, which was a dry goods store, as an observation point during the first day of the battle. It was here that he learned of General John F. Reynolds' death. The Sanitary Commission was set up in this store as well. It was from the steps of this building that John W. Forney, editor and Lincoln supporter, gave a rousing speech on November the 18th, 1863. Alright, if I don't do this right, then my wife's, I'm going to be on the bad side of my wife. So y'all bear with me and pray for me. But while you're doing that, don't forget, share us with your friends. Like us if you like us. Like us if you don't. Subscribe to the channel. It helps us out. God bless.